to the next 100 years. Cheers. Fall 2009. The mayor and city council launch a major new phase and discover just how tough their interceptor is. Solid. We go all the way in by the... Construction supervisor Mike Johns is also feeling upbeat. Things are happening, they're coming together. We're finally starting to install some pipes. We're starting to have fun out here. We're probably running 40 men right now. Between the divers, uh, the crane operators, the pipe welders. A temporary wood and steel trestle on the southeast side of the lake is the staging area for building and deploying pipeline and hardware. Center stage is the pipe, with a personality of its own, large and dramatic. This is the inside of one of our sewer pipes, 42 inch in diameter. This piece is 50 foot long, weighs about 8,000 pounds. 50 foot lengths of pipe show up on the truck a couple times a week. Roughly on this job, we're doing somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 foot strings of pipe. Crews must fuse over three miles of pipeline here, one piece at a time, with leak-proof bonds stronger than the pipe itself. It's a time and heat process. You heat up the HDPE plastic until it's hot, and then you press it together under pressure, and you hold it until it cools and it solidifies. A worker then crawls inside to scrape the bead, creating a smooth surface. When a length is completed, the ends are sealed and it's floated onto the lake for pressure testing. Once we certify the pipe that it's ready to go, uh, then we'll take it downrange and, and install it. Well, almost. Much of the project's high-level engineering is dedicated to taming a prominent feature of the pipe. It's temperature sensitive. In response to seasonal lake temperatures shifting as much as 40 degrees, 10,000 feet of interceptor can grow or shrink 14 feet. Well, I always characterize it as an uncooked piece of spaghetti held between your hands. Uh, you, you push on that piece of spaghetti and it can, it can bend up, it can bend down, or it can bend uh, side to side. And the system that we've designed here constrains those movements in all four planes. The big question for engineer Joel Kamarik and his team, how to maintain a uniform slope in a buoyant pipe that wants to wiggle in every direction. Vertical motion is controlled by a system of tethers and anchors holding the pipe to bedrock. And 500 high-tech floats, buoyancy pods, pulling it upward to its design location. Horizontal motion is managed by allowing the pipe limited movement side to side. And that's why uh, we have uh, included what we call thermal expansion loops in the pipe. From above, the interceptor looks like a snake, a series of arcs working like springs to absorb motion. So any thermal expansion we get will go, and I'm looking down at the pipe now, it'll go sideways. So the S-shaped uh, design uh, allows the pipe to expand and contract and yet maintain grade. To become an S, each thousand foot length is carefully bent at a staging area. It's a slow process. Plastic pipe takes time for it to gain its memory. Attachment points every 200 feet hold it in its serpentine shape, matching precisely with the pattern of anchors installed along the lake bottom. This pipe is challenging to work with, no doubt about it, but we chose it because it's impact resistant, it's corrosion resistant, better than all the other pipe materials we looked at. Time for installation. This is the um, first piece of pipe that goes on on the west end of the lake. It goes from manhole A to manhole B. First step is get it pulled down five or six locations, get it on bottoms, get it sunk, uh, and then we go through and we hook up all the tethers. This is where a good wetsuit and some adrenaline come in handy. My name's Shannon Rogers, and I'm a uh, diving supervisor. A 24-year veteran of underwater construction hazards, Shannon warms up for his next dive. Why do I keep doing it? It's just because I love my job. You gotta be slightly courageous and slightly maybe off kilter. Each diver is connected to an umbilical cord that supplies warm water to the insulating suit, power for tools, and a two-way radio and helmet camera linked to the barge deck. All the diver's skills come together when a section of pipeline is ready for placing between a pair of manholes. Dive crews sink the interceptor into the saddles of the buoyancy pods they've attached to the tether and anchor system. They lock it into place with brackets and prepare to bolt the pipe ends to the manholes. It's not as easy as it sounds. 
I'm not having much fun yet. We've got about an eighth inch of tolerance to get this pipe on location per 25 feet. Every day now, it's, it's always about the tolerance. It's making sure our grade's right on our pipe, checking to make sure we're bending our, our pipe at the right angle because we, we can't miss it and catch it later. Extremely tricky. Uh, but uh, so far they've been uh, able to achieve the tolerances that uh, have been specified for the project and we're very pleased with that. It's another day in the pipeline business. Coming up, the countdown begins for lowering the lake so the new system can be connected.